In the report that we have just published on Colombia, we are focused on the political stability of the peace agreement in the medium and long terms. We begin by focusing on the October 2nd plebiscite result in which the peace agreement was rejected by less than one half of one percent. From there, we focus on the renegotiation process between the opposition, between the government, and between the FARC. We find that we do have a new peace agreement with many of the issues argued by the opposition changed in the new text. We find that nonetheless, despite having a new peace agreement with those changes, this accord lacks the political legitimacy to be able to be implemented in the medium long term, especially if the opposition comes to power in 2018. With this instability for the peace agreement in the medium term, the best solution to change the balance of power and the perception of the Colombian population towards peace is to implement key parts of the agreement as quickly and as effectively as possible. Most importantly, the FARC's arms abandonment process has to go well. Or the opposition and the Colombian population could argue that they really don't have an interest in peace. With congressional and presidential elections taking place in 2018, peace with the FARC yet again will be the main issue discussed during political campaigns. Given that the opposition is now united against the peace agreement and the balance of political power after the plebiscite, a very likely scenario for 2018 is that Colombia has a president who rejects the implementation of at least part of the peace agreement. The communication strategy regarding the FARC arms abandonment process will also have to be adjusted according to the new political reality. This will mean that the FARC will have to consider showing images of guerrilla fighters handing over their weapons in order to convince the Colombian population that they are actually fulfilling their part of the agreement which they themselves negotiated. During 2016, we also saw an increase of selective killings of social leaders all throughout Colombia. This violence will have to cease or decrease incredibly quickly in 2017 in order for local populations, the guerrillas, and other civil movements to believe that there are actual benefits of peace on the ground. Transitional justice mechanisms will also be an important part of the debate in 2017. Given the structure of the special jurisdiction for peace, it likely will not hear any cases at all in the next year. Nonetheless, other parts of the transitional justice agreement regarding victims of the disappeared, the Truth Commission as well, will need to be up and running fairly quickly to show the Colombian population that victims are still a central part of this peace agreement and that the FARC and other violators of human rights will see justice in some way and tell the truth. Other more humanitarian aspects of the agreement will also need to make progress in 2017, including demining. If these issues do not make progress, local communities may not feel that peace has actually had a positive effect in their lives in a day-to-day -day basis in the next year. Finally, the Colombian state is in a bit of a financial crisis. A decrease in revenues from oil production has meant that budgets have had to be cut across the board. Therefore, its financial capacity to pay for the reforms, to pay for the implementation of the agreement, is quite limited. The international community has stepped up, but so far the relationship between the government and the international community and how money will be spent has been strained. 